Hi, welcome to Dental Canvas. I am Dr. Gopal Kasat, and in this episode, we will be discussing the anatomy of the maxillary first premolar. Before going ahead, if you are new to this series, check the description or refer to the video on the top right corner to learn basic terminologies required for a better understanding of this video. The premolars are so named because they are anterior to the molars in the permanent dentition. The maxillary premolars are developed from the same number of lobes as anterior teeth, that is four. The primary difference in development is the well-formed lingual cusp developed from the lingual lobe, which is represented by the cingulum development on incisors and canine. This also results into the movement of the marginal ridges in a more horizontal plane and are considered part of the occlusal surface of the crown rather than part of the lingual surface. Now, let us start with the buccal aspect of the maxillary right first premolar. From the buccal aspect, the crown is roughly trapezoidal. Length of the crown cervico-occlusally is 8.5 mm, which is shorter than that of the canine by 1.5 to 2 mm. Moving on to the mesial outline of the crown, which is slightly concave from the cervical line to the mesial contact area. The contact area is represented by a relatively broad curvature, the crest of which lies immediately occlusal to the halfway point from the cervical line to the tip of the buccal cusp. The distal outline of the crown below the cervical line is straighter than that of the mesial side. The distal contact area is represented by a broader curvature than found mesially, and the crest of curvature of the contact area tends to be a little more occlusal compared to the mesial side. Although this tooth resembles the canine from the buccal aspect, it differs in that the contact areas mesially and distally are almost at the same level. Now, when you observe carefully, the mesial slope of the buccal cusp is rather straight and longer than the distal slope, which is shorter and more curved. This arrangement places the tip of the buccal cusp distal to a line by sectioning the buccal surface of the crown. The opposite arrangement, that is, the distal slope is longer than the mesial slope, is true of the maxillary canine. The width of the crown of the maxillary first premolar mesodistally is 7 mm at its greatest measurement, and the mesodistal width of the crown at the cervix is about 5 mm. The buccal surface of the crown is convex, showing the strong development of the middle buccal lobe. The continuous ridge from the cusp tip to the cervical margin on the buccal surface of the crown is called the buccal ridge. Mesial and distal to the buccal ridge, developmental depressions are seen at occlusal or middle third that serve as demarcations between the middle buccal lobe and the mesobuccal and distobuccal lobes. The length of the root is 14 mm and are 3 to 4 mm shorter than those of the maxillary canine. Now, let us move on to the lingual aspect. From the lingual aspect, the gross outline of the maxillary first premolar is the reverse of the gross outline from the buccal aspect. The cervical line is regular with slight curvature towards the root and the crest of curvature centered on the root. The lingual cusp is smooth and spheroidal from the cervical portion to the area near the cusp tip. The mesial and distal outline of the lingual portion of the crown are convex and straighten out as they join the mesial and distal side of the lingual root at the cervical line. The cusp tip is pointed with mesial and distal slope meeting at an angle of about 90 degrees. The crest of the smooth lingual portion that terminates at the tip of the lingual cusp is called the lingual ridge. The lingual cusp is narrower mesodistally than the buccal cusp, as the crown tapers bucolingually. Due to this, it is possible to see part of the mesial and distal surfaces of crown and root from the lingual aspect. Because the lingual cusp is not as long as the buccal cusp, the tips of both cusps with their mesial and distal slopes are seen from the lingual aspect. The apex of the lingual root tends to be more blunt when compared to the buccal root apex. Moving on to the mesial aspect, the mesial aspect of the crown of the maxillary first premolar is also roughly trapezoidal with the longest of the uneven side towards the cervical portion and the shortest towards the occlusal portion. The maxillary first premolar has two cusps, a buccal and a lingual, each being sharply defined. The buccal cusp is usually about 1 mm longer than the lingual cusp. The buccal cusp of the maxillary first premolar assists the canine as a tearing tooth. The measurement from the tip of the buccal cusp to the tip of the lingual cusp is less than the bucolingual measurement of the root at its cervical portion. Thus, the tips of the cusp are well within the confines of the root trunk. 
From the mesial aspect, the buccal outline of the crown curves outward below the cervical line to the crest of the curvature, which is often located approximately at the junction of the cervical and middle thirds. From the crest of curvature, the buccal outline continues as a line of less convexity to the tip of the buccal cusp. The lingual outline of the crown may be described as a smoothly curved line starting at the cervical line and ending at the tip of the lingual cusp. The crest of this curvature is near the center of the middle third. The buccolingual diameter of the crown at its widest region is 9 mm and the buccolingual width at the cervix is 8 mm. The curvature of the cervical line mesially is about 1 mm and is less than the cervical curvature on the mesial side of any of the anterior teeth. A distinguishing feature of the maxillary first premolar is a well-defined developmental groove in the enamel of the mesial marginal ridge, which is at the level of the junction of the middle and occlusal third. This groove terminates at a short distance cervical to the mesial marginal ridge on the mesial surface. This marginal groove is continuous with the central groove of the occlusal surface of the crown. Most maxillary first premolars have two roots, one buccal and one lingual which can be appreciated from the mesial aspect. The buccal outline of the buccal root above the cervical line is straight with a tendency toward a lingual inclination and tip of the buccal cusp is directly below the center of the buccal root. The lingual outline of the lingual root is rather straight above the cervical line and the tip of the lingual cusp is on a line with the lingual border of the lingual root. The root trunk is long on this tooth making up about more than half of the root length. The bifurcation begins at a more occlusal point mesially than distally. Another distinguishing feature of this tooth is found on the mesial surface of the crown, immediately cervical to the mesial contact area, centered on the mesial surface and bordered buccally and lingually by the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual line angles, is a marked depression called the mesial developmental depression. This mesial concavity continues apically beyond the cervical line and joins a deep developmental depression between the roots and end at the root bifurcation. From the distal aspect, the curvature of the cervical line is less on the distal than on the mesial surface, often showing a straight line buccolingually. Developmental marginal groove and depression on the root on the distal aspect are not appreciable and bifurcation of the root is abrupt near the apical third. Now, let us move on to the last aspect that is the occlusal aspect. The occlusal aspect of the maxillary first premolar resembles roughly a six-sided or hexagonal figure. The six sides are made up of mesiobuccal, mesial, mesiolingual, distolingual, distal and distobuccal. This hexagonal figure is not equilateral and can be used to compare individual sides. The two buccal sides are almost equal with the mesiobuccal side being slightly longer. The mesial side is shorter than the distal side and the mesiolingual side is shorter than the distolingual side. The crest of the distal contact area is somewhat buccal to that of the mesial contact area and the crest of the buccal ridge is somewhat distal to that of the lingual ridge. Buccolingual taper can be appreciated from this side, thus the crown is wider on the buccal than on the lingual side. The buccolingual dimension of the crown is much greater than the mesiodistal dimension and the distobuccal cusp ridge is buccal to the mesiobuccal cusp ridge. The angle formed by the convergence of the mesiobuccal cusp ridge and the mesial marginal ridge approaches a right angle. Compared to that, the angle formed by the convergence of the distobuccal cusp ridge and the distal marginal ridge is acute. The mesiolingual and distolingual cusp ridges are confluent with the mesial and distal marginal ridges. These cusp ridges are curved following a semicircular outline from the marginal ridges to their convergence at the tip of the lingual cusp. From this aspect, more of the buccal surface of the crown is seen than of the lingual surface. Now, if you will look closely, a well-defined central developmental groove divides the surface evenly buccolingually. It is located at the bottom of the central sulcus of the occlusal surface, extending from a point just mesial to the distal marginal ridge to the mesial marginal ridge, where it joins the mesial marginal developmental groove. Two collateral developmental grooves join the central groove just inside the mesial and distal marginal ridges, 
These groups are called the mesobuccal developmental group and the distobuccal developmental group respectively. The junction of the grooves are deeply pointed and are named the mesial and distal developmental pits. Just distal to the mesial marginal ridge, the triangular depression is called the mesial triangular fossa and similarly, the depression in the occlusal surface just mesial to the distal marginal ridge is called the distal triangular fossa. The buccal triangular ridge of the buccal cusp is prominent, arising near the center of the central groove and converging with the tip of the buccal cusp. Similarly, the lingual triangular cusp ridge, which is less prominent, also arises near the center of the central groove and converges with the tip of the lingual cusp. This completes all the five surfaces of the maxillary first premolar. To summarize it all, you can see an image on the screen with all the average dimensions and key features. To download the same and see our resources, check the description. If you have learned something, hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. Looking forward to your comments. Thanks for watching. I am Dr. Gopal and you have been watching Dental Canvas.